Yep, mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two, one, two three in the place to be. Mic check, one, two, one, two, I am loud, earth and color. And mic check, mic check, you got it? You good? We cool? Welcome to another edition of That's Just It with Connor and Kurt. I'm one of your hosts, Connor McGrath, and uh, we've got a very exciting show for you today. Now, unfortunately, our regular co-host, uh, Kurt Baker, is, uh, is out for the day. Uh, he had an uh, important audition come up at the last minute for Southern Metal Legends Jackal. So he's there today, and we wish him good luck uh, with that uh, with that audition, um, but he's here in spirit. He's uh, he's actually looking a lot better than he normally does. Uh, he's got a very very. He's been working out. Uh, healthy rack too. He's got a very nice uh, healthy rack here, and uh, so we wish him well. And uh, we we press on without him. But uh, we do have a very special um, guest co-host today. It's the legal advisor for That's Just It with Connor and Kurt, Mr. Herbert Bernstein, mm. who is uh, now recently added uh, minister in the Church of uh, Nation of Islam to mm. his credits. Yes, it is, it's the Nation of Islam. Yes, yeah, the Nation of Islam. Online degree. Online mm -hmm. degree, yes. Yeah. yes. University of Phoenix. Yes, the Nation of Islam branch of the University <laughs> of Phoenix. Not a, not a well-known branch of the university, but a very prestigious one. It was that or Kaplan, but, uh, you know. You only have so much money, you know. Yeah. You're not made well, of money. And also, in Kaplan, the Muslims and all the police officer guys have to share a classroom. And it usually just... Mm. That's, that's very awkward. It never a, ends well, you know. I, mean, yeah. I have a bad history with, with the police. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Not, not Muslims. You have a bad... Specifically, yes. Yeah. I, was do, I was doing one of my... Wiccan uh, dowsing rituals out in Baxter Woods, and uh, you know, I, what one more needs to be said? You have to read yeah. the local police beat, and uh, yep, and the yeah. forecaster. You can find it mm. in this in uh, this week's edition of the forecast. I don't like front the page news. I, I, I read the story. I read the story, and I don't like the fact that they were talking about how you you know you were naked, you were waving your penis around, but it mm. it didn't mention that it was for religious reasons. Purposes. You know what that's I mean? True. And like that's just I felt like you know you're kind of they're slighting you. They're not mm. really delving into the story of Wiccan rites and... No. Well, it, it wasn't even my actual penis. It was a fake phallus yeah. representing Mumra, the <laughs> an antagonist of the Thundercats, who, of course, in, in my branch of Wic Wiccanism is one of our <laughs> chief deities. It's a good so, one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, this, uh, this pagan Wiccan pra uh, practices is, is all very compelling, and we, you can see this on uh, Herb Bernstein's upcoming spinoff, uh, Paganism Today, <laughs> that will uh, air in the near future on uh, on this station. Yes. But uh, right now, hosted I, by uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's head and uh, <laughs> Louis Farrakhan. <laughs> but right now, well, he's uh, not in prison. Mm. Sorry. Right now, I'd like to uh, introduce our our special guest for today. Uh, you've already seen him. Uh, he's a one of the most unique uh, up-and-coming young comedians in the Portland area. Uh, he recently had a successful string of shows at uh, Levity Comedy Club in Burlington, Vermont, and you can see him every Thursday night at Slauncha Wine Bar mm -hmm. in uh, Portland. And uh, he's also an occasional, occasionally performs in his rap act, uh, Mechanical Hounds. Occasion, it's, uh, it's been slowing down. I, uh, I did that more in the past. Focusing more on comedy, um, but mm -hmm. every time I need to hook up with an 18 year old to 19 year old lady, I perform my hip hop. That's mm. also and, that's always uh, a good strategy. I mean, you know. As do I. So yeah. I, I support you in that. Yeah. Well, yeah, how did He's you. Usually, how did, but, 
But anyways, our guest is, his name is, we haven't said his name yet, <laughs> uh, goes without saying, the, the great uh, Ian Stewart. And uh, Ian, let's start off with a basic question. How did you get uh, started off in uh, stand-up? Stand uh, mm. I started doing stand-up uh, when I was 18 in high school. Um, I, started, I took like a class. I've always been like super interested in comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the first albums I ever bought were comedy albums and not like you know rock and roll albums. I've always loved comedy. Yeah. So I got enrolled in this class to do stand-up. Uh, started doing stand-up uh, really young. Went to college. Stopped doing stand-up. Started doing drugs. Less fun than stand-up. But not by much. Yeah, barely, barely. A little bit. Barely. You know. More people laugh at you, though. It's good. It's nice. Yeah. Um, stopped doing that and really got into comedy uh, a couple years ago. Mm. Pretty hardcore. Mm -hmm. what, uh, were, what were some of your, uh, you know, you said you bought a lot of those albums. What, who were some of your early influences, albums that you bought a lot of? When I was a super young kid, I, wasn't, I was coming just like I would go to a record store and uh, I wasn't really buying from a frame of reference. I was buying from, you know, just whatever album looked cool or whatever. So I got like a John Panette CD, Chris Rock, Born Suspect, which is like his first CD, mm -hmm. uh, some Bill Hicks stuff, which really still influenced me a lot today. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I started getting into like a little bit more into uh, like alternative comedy, like Doug Stanhope, David Tell, uh, David Cross, uh, guys that kind of pushed the envelope a little bit. And uh, yeah. I think it's helped me form something now. <laughs> now uh, you perform, you're performing all over the state of Maine and, and, uh, and as well as New Hampshire and Massachusetts, mm -hmm. all over New England, yep. as Vermont, as we mentioned. Do you find, you know, the dynamics of your performance change uh, with the audience, like yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Del different delivery. Yeah, hundred percent. I think uh, w I think one of the biggest things, especially in Maine, that I help that Maine's awesome for is um, like sharpening my wit and tongue, like dealing with like crowd response. Mm. And uh, like if you go to like some place like Vermont, everyone's there to see your comedy show, and everyone's really really polite, you know. Um, right. Because they don't really see a lot coming through. They don't so get you're going a lot in of there. Yeah, they're they're down. They just want to hear the jokes, and they'll laugh pretty much. Uh, if you perform well, they'll laugh at you. Uh, in Boston, stuff like that, you kind of have to. Uh, you have to fight for it, and you have to kind of maybe gain respect some some nights with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, dealing with the crowds. But living in a place like Maine, it's it, it's only helped my uh, yeah. you know getting out there. I think maybe in Boston would have already been defeated. Yeah. But with my uh, yeah yeah, it's polite, yeah. but it's not it's not too polite. I yeah. find it's like more, yeah. there's more they're yeah. willing to give you a chance to an extent. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I, Portland's willing, great yeah. for the fact that it's a small town. Everyone knows you, and after a while, once people start knowing you, they just start screaming at you. Mm. On stage, anyways, because they feel like they're part of the act, and right. uh, that helps. You know, that always helps. Yeah, that's good. Like yeah, you know, the, the nice little hostile cougar double act there. Oh yeah, he was just attacked like, recently yeah. on stage by a cougar. Uh, by a cougar, uh, mm. a, a female cougar, mm -hmm. uh, forty-five. She then yes. made out with me later in the night. For the, I don't know if anyone knows this, but yes, yeah. for the that's for, for the viewers that don't know, might be getting the uh, wrong image. The cougar refers to an, an older woman mm. who stalks young men as their prey, and not the uh, yeah. The, he didn't make the, out with a mountain the mountain cat. Although not a, maybe on another night. He yeah, I mean it's him. not. I'm not saying it wouldn't happen. But yeah, let's yeah, not. No. <laughs> let's not jump to conclusions. I mean, I could have. Any 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 real cougars out there that want to take a shot at Ian Stewart? You yeah, know, he is well open. I so. taste like fish, apparently. Mm. <laughs> is that a good thing, like salmon or like the fillet of fish or something? It depends. I you know what? I haven't really I haven't delved in. You know, usually mm. the people that tell me that fish. Yeah. I don't need to get into it. I'm not going to try and find out. I'll take their word for yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who knows? But a, a, lot of, a lot of people don't know that me and Ian go back a long, 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 long lost pals uh, recently. Back. Back together. Uh, we grew up together uh, from the time we lived across the street from the mm -hmm. time I was born to about the time I was three years old. And we lived on... Uh, Hammond. Ham Hammond Street. Yep. Yeah. Right, uh, right on the hill. Yep. On the hill. My you ever joy. wonder? You ever wonder what would have happened if we had stayed on Hammond Street? Uh, I believe we'd be freebasing Oxycontin right I now. I know. That's. Yeah. I mean, that's just my. That's just my speculation too. I think I like. I kind of regret not staying on Hammond yeah. Street. I mean, I would have liked to be more tough. Oh yeah, we'd be I tough. I feel like I would have been more tough. We'd be tough. The thing is, yeah. though, I think if we stayed on Hammond Street, we'd be the dudes yelling at people outside right now. Like, yeah. I was walking down the street, and a girl, I, I was apparently walking a little too close, and. Mm -hmm. She was like, get the fuck out of my way, which is, you know, it's kind of inappropriate. Um, it is inappropriate. That's not But she's homeless, so it only counted half as much, <laughs> you know, so. Not as much as it actually would. Yeah. 
But yeah. yeah, so you went to Hammond Street, and then you went to Gorham. Went to Gorham. Gorham. That's kind of a, that's kind of a jump. Yeah, my uh, uh, I moved to Gorham. My dad uh, used to own Megaphone Studios out here on Clark Street, I believe, mm -hmm. right out here, mm -hmm. uh, back in the '80s, and uh, sold that with his friend. And moved to Gorham. And Living the high life, yeah. Yeah. And the sticks, yeah. Moved to the Burbs. It was good. The Burbs are all right. I was made fun of a lot. I think that's it helped my you know develop my my comedy style. Yeah, mm. I was kind of made fun of a lot, but I didn't realize it, so it wasn't so bad until later. Oh, that's good. That's I just nice. realized like everybody I was friends that's with in middle school was actually a dick to me. Yeah. See, I think like in all honesty, like in school, I probably would have been fine, but my parents really pushed me to do sports, and I'm not an athletic dude. No. At mm. all, and uh, so I was just like the, I was the picking post on all the sport teams. So I mean, I had to like you know, learn how to talk trash at least. Right. It was good. Right. You think it helped your your comedy a lot? Oh yeah, ultimately? oh yeah, absolutely. Being a, I think, uh, I think that's uh, like it's one of those things where you know I, I spent a lot of time in my own head on the bleachers, uh, coming up with uh, ways to insult the guys that were like, <laughs> pushing me in the mud, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after they lost and blame yeah. it on me. Um, <clears throat> then yeah, internalizing totally, it, that for years. Yeah, it, it, it totally it, it, it helped. You know. Yeah, definitely. building it up, awesome. internalizing it for years. Yeah, that builds yeah. up good stand. Yeah. Up. It was either that or you know shoot them, and that was probably right. Bad. And that's not very. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not a yeah. very. Yeah. yeah. I think you would have gotten a suspension. From yeah, that. totally. Would have been would have been bad. Detention. Well, it, it it seems like maybe except for Will Ferrell. I mean, you don't really hear about a lot of guys that do comedy in general that had you know, oh, I was well liked and everything was really easy and. You know that that kind of thing. It does seem to kind of come from, you know, that that anger, or whatever, oh, yeah, that sadness, or fuel for something. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think it's even like I'm. I've never like an angry person. I don't think I ever try to come from an an angry place. No. I come from. I think it, uh, you know. Uh, I understood at a very young age what my weaknesses were. You know what I mean? Because they were pointed out to me really quick by all the other kids. Mm. So it took me thinking about what what their weaknesses were, and they were not physical. So I'd have to make fun of something else, and it just. Now I'm a bitter, angry person. I know that. I now just judge people. That just steals just you well from the comedy clubs because you gotta yeah. judge people instantaneously yeah, yeah, it definitely when they heckle helps. you. I'm good. I'm good at comedy. I'm an asshole. Yeah. Like outside of comedy, this, people hate me. But uh, speaking of mad. speaking of heckling, I'm sure you've got a lot of stories just from your oh, brief yeah. time. I know we did an open mic night together down in Sanford. Ooh. That was. Uh, that yeah. Was tell us, interesting. Tell, tell us about that. What happened there? Well, that was a. It was a what we would consider a dead show. Very um, dead. Yeah. And the problem with a, a dead show is uh, no one's interested at all. Mm. The only people that are interested in the dead show are the people looking to hate on something. So the mm. only response that you're getting is a negative response, which I mean. Yeah. It's, it, it was it, just it, silence. It, I would yeah. have rather had somebody yell yeah. at us. Yeah, and actually, and to be honest, there's some comedy clubs where the silence can be, t you know, I'll take that as a laughter instead of being, you know, yelled at or thrown something at. But I, it was a lonely yeah. night that night. I, yeah, very lonely. There was lonely one guy, on and he just, uh, he just, he really liked our friend Paul Hunt. Yeah, yeah, to the yeah. point where I thought, since we were in Stanford, I thought he was going to tie him up. Oh yeah. And somewhere. <laughs> Sell him. We we're going to have to rescue him. But I remember I just did a lot of I did a lot of new material. That was like my first open. That was like my first performance in like a month. And I just talked about like porn the whole time. And it was like silence. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to talk about porn again. Like, it was just like the waitress was giving me a really nasty look. And I was like, ah, this is not a good way to get pick up women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Por yeah there's it, wasn't the, it wasn't the porn crowd. <laughs> that's, a, that's one thing. Whenever I'm like hanging out with friends, they're always asking me like, oh, man, you must like, you must meet chicks after shows. And it's like after you talk for like 40 minutes about like drugs and your dick. And yeah. Like, master like just constant mm. awful things. No one like, you're, you're funny. And you're kind of like the cute puppy at the store they'll play with, but they're not taking you home, you know? Like, they're going right. to put you back because you've got diseases and you're going to die young, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's just like, and, and the chicks that do come up, not always the best. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, uh, they're usually 45-year-old cougars. Right. <laughs> Which, I mean, it's fun sometimes, but, you know, sometimes it, it runs its course. Yeah. There's sometimes only stretch you just want a nice take, girl you know? to drink a nice glass of milk and have some cookies yeah. with it. That doesn't have, you know, a scar on her stomach from a baby being taken out. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm looking for in OK Keep It. Don't have a scar on your belly. Now you you live uh, you live right across. We're not going to advertise right where you live. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's not advertise right where we live. But we can talk about it. Yeah, the crossroads. It's an infamous sort of party point for yeah, it's a party for house. comedians. Yep. It's in an interesting neighborhood of Portland, and yep. I'd like to know some of the crazy mm. stories about. Uh, Living in the crossroads, if you oh, got it. Oh man! Well, I've I've been robbed numerous times. Well, no, I've 
almost been robbed numerous times. I'm a yeah. pretty like tall dude, and I'm a loud guy. Not many people really want to. Yeah. After they ask me for money, I tell them to you know f off. Yeah. In a loud voice, I rarely go farther than that. But uh, I was, uh, two weeks ago, someone just got stabbed in the neck outside of my door. That was fun. Uh, we had someone be taken away in an ambulance last week, uh, tripping his balls off on my front porch. Was that one of your guests? No, not a, no, no, no. <laughs> my guests were inside, tripping, <laughs> tripping inside. Yeah, we were, we had, but the thing is our drugs are, weren't cut with, you know, fucking baby formula, so we were all right. Yeah, no, you got you <laughs> good, good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we have that, it's, it's a constant barrage of screaming and yelling and, uh, Oh, I live right on a corner though, so I mean, the, and the corner is like notorious uh, for heavy drug selling. And I know somebody tried to buy uh, buy OxyContin for me once. Oh, there. nice. I was yeah. like, do I, do I look like I have OxyContin? Yeah. And then I didn't really want the answer to that because <laughs> yeah. he obviously asked me. Yeah. I guess you did. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then I, I, I made some good money that day. But it's I, it's it's a it's an area that I talk about in my stand up a lot, and uh, I had a uh, one of my uh, my my friends from Vermont that was opening up for me uh, came down to do a show and uh, she was staying over at my house for the night yeah. and the entire time she thought, she was like, oh man, I thought you were just being dramatic about the area you live in. You live in a very, very, very shitty place. Because like, as she was trying to get into my apartment, two different guys had tried to stop her. Like, you know, like, oh, why don't you come over here and, you know, rock and Ricky's and like yeah. hang out and just, come on. yeah, some rough stuff, but. A little, little hint there about the logo. But I think, yeah. I mean, that's why we party so hard there, you know, to kind of like ease the pain. Numb the pain. Yeah, yeah numb the pain yeah. of but the, that's the, the good, area. I think the good thing about the, the the bad neighborhoods in Portland is like if you really get freaked out, you can just jog for about three minutes and you'll not be in oh, that yeah, bad yeah, exactly. neighborhood. And to be honest, like if we were in that area, I mean, and I know you've both been to parties at the crossroads. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be able to get away with what we get away with if we were in like a respectable neighborhood, you know? No. We would be, <laughs> we would have already gone to jail would, for noise complaints uh, a long time would, ago. They would love it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, so. I've, been, I've been busted, yeah, I've been busted in the woods more often than it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's much easier to get busted in the woods. I, I might nothing's have been happening there too. in the woods. That's so like, true. Some old lady, I just asked what's happening in the woods. And, you know, we're doing some pagan stuff and hmm. all of a sudden we the cops are coming. Yep. Never good. I don't like. Uh, I mean, I don't. I don't know if we want to get into it. Yeah, no, sure. We got but, time. I mean, we're talking about cops. I am having a current issue with rookie cops in the city yeah. getting a little aggressive. We've got a bit of an aggressive police force right now. I know. On the I rookie level. It. On the rookie level, I feel like the mayor watches this channel occasionally. It's Portland's public yeah. access. Yeah. So you so know, mayor Brennan, you're watching. Mayor. Or Tell some of your younger guys to just or the cool, cool, cool down. down. Maybe it's cool out. You know. Yeah. Some, you know, the instructors at the police academy aren't as you know. Yeah, I don't, you know, I'm not sure. A, a I'm, lapse you know, in judgment, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if they can see the bulge and they're just already upset with me that yeah. that's what I work with and they don't, so. <laughs> Gun, guns commentating for something. Is yeah, that is, I'm sorry, I took I took the conversation nowhere. I went into a political, a political corner rant. and then it's I shame killed too. it. It's all corner. political, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> and we're just, we're just blending in with everybody else. Yeah. It's all political. And so, uh, we talked a little bit about the open mic night in Stanford. Mm. Give me the best. Uh, give me the best uh, hostile audience member at a comedy show that you've you've bore witness to. Um, well, one of my personal favorites is the cougar that actually came up on stage and attacked me and took the microphone away from me. I like that. That was one of my favorites. I That's also um, <laughs> that that really doesn't happen that often. Sometimes you'll get like a really loud drunk guy in the audience. And my favorite are the super. Um, loud cocky guys that when you get on stage before you say anything they yell something right yeah. and so they've set up they've set up the room for you and it could go either way it could go either way but it's interesting yeah i've got an ego you know like a i've got an ego like someone who actually does stuff but i don't yeah. um and i like i like that's probably my favorite and that's happened a couple of times of when i hear some when i get to take down the jock it's like being yeah. back on the on the right. bench again yeah this is what they get for calling me yeah fair gay Foster, over and over, or whatever. over again. yeah but you know, uh, so so the rapping thing. Did, did the rapping thing come before the comedy, or was it? Uh, it was comedy. I uh, did a little rap again. Like was it kind of into drugs, so I got into rapping. Apparently, <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah. Uh, and it was all right. We we got a couple songs on like uh, some really small record labels and stuff like that on some compilations, and 
Mm. Did a music video, toured around New England a couple times. Uh, wow. Made some good friends. I didn't know that, yeah. But uh, I, uh, yeah, things kind of just you know changed. I, I got into a mo I got a movie part and. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to tell us about that, or yeah, sure. How, I was, did, uh, how did that come about? Uh, uh, the movie's called The Putt Putt Syndrome. Jason London from Days Confused uh, mm -hmm. was producing it and starring in it, and my buddy was a PA on the film. And speaking of hip hop, right around the time I was ending the hip hop thing, I still had all this DJ gear and I was DJing professionally at like clubs and stuff like that. Yeah. And he calls me up and he was like, "Hey man, we need a DJ for the set, <coughs> and we also need like a bunch of drugs." And so like one stop shop, Ian Stewart. <laughs> Bring them up, and uh, I, you know, they they did the movie, and I did the scene as the strip club DJ, and uh, it was released. I think you can find it on Netflix. I think or it's on like DVD. That. Yeah, yeah you can find it. On, I read yeah. about it in the Phoenix. I didn't yeah. know you were the strip club DJ. A uh, strip club DJ in and that the, thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that was a good. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's actually, it's the shittiest movie I've ever seen, but I'm <laughs> in the shittiest movie I've ever seen. So, I mean, that's kind of, it's like a toss-up. Yeah. You know, so it's, you know, do you want to see a really awful movie? No, not really. I'm in it. Ooh, really? really? Yeah. All right, yeah, sure. Let's go. Scene selection, go to that. Yeah, part, right? exactly. Good kind of party trick, you know, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's worked a couple of times. Did, did, um, did you get some decent scratch for it, or how did that go? Uh, I just sold a lot of drugs. Um, so, in that, yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't actually get paid for it, but it's more of like, in all honesty, I really I use it a lot for um, yeah. when I'm doing like clubs. Uh, the guy that manages me when he's booking me places, Mentions he throws that out like Jason all that you know. That's a that's a big. Didn't thing. Jason London go on some sort of like drug like his brother rampage? His brother, his brother. did. I'm Jeremy pretty sure. London. Yeah. I was. I was Jason London is still like, into yeah. the drugs. I think he still likes. The, yeah, uh, I was wondering if you Jeremy were like the, the cause of that. It's like so. yeah. it's one of yeah. your batch causes. <laughs> <of people. laughs> All that shitty main pot, you know, yeah. putting him in rehab. Yeah, he went on a tirade against, <laughs> across Death Valley because this pot, this shitty pot's driving me crazy. This shitty pot, it's making my skin itch and drying me out. <laughs> yeah, so, so we can see you pretty much every Thursday. You've been there every Thursday. I, uh, I always go to Slaunch. If I don't have anything to do right. on... Uh, in the month of June, I'll be at the Asylum on a Thursday, and I think I'll probably be down in Massachusetts on a Thursday. But okay. for the most part, if I don't have anything to do, I'm always at Slauncha working on my... And uh, yeah. I rarely do new jokes there. It's always... Yeah. I mean, I rarely do old jokes there. I always do brand new material there. It's, like, it's my place to play around. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, you can see a lot of... You can see all... The great thing about Slauncha is you can see all levels of comedians. You can see, oh, yeah. you know, your Brian Brenegers who are you know, top level yeah, awesome. at, at this state, and you can yeah. see uh, Ziggy. <laughs> <laughs> or B-Rat, or, you know, not yeah. that those guys yeah. aren't great. Different, yeah, Different I mean, levels. everyone has their own place, you know. They, you know, they all have their are, own yeah. place. It's <laughs> like, and then you see, like, the newcomers, like the drunk guy from The Office. That's oh, yeah, oh, dude, so good. Not the show The Office. I don't want yeah. people to get too excited. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, Which that's drunk guy? Fun. There are many love celebrity appearances every Thursday at Slaunch. Right, and oh, you can yeah, often yeah. see one or both uh, hosts of this very show yeah. at Slaunch. And then there's always after parties at the Crossroads. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Slaunch, you know, if you want like, nice. a real experience, party with us. Yeah. yeah. If nothing else, we just want to put money in Ian Farnsworth's pocket, really. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. this is about. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so he can he can reopen so. Gogi. Yeah, so we can have some <laughs> chicken kimchi tacos. That's really what I'm. This, exactly. This is what it was all about. Kimchi tacos. Okay. It's the real friend. Bring kimchi Gogi tacos. Back. That's the moral of this interview. We want kimchi tacos and uh, sweet potato fries. Exactly. That's a great combination. Unexpectedly winning. So do you want to th uh, throw out any any more plugs? I think I, I've plugged you pretty well, but if you got um, any more plugs, we got to wrap up. Fortunately, it's been yeah, a great time. I think uh, definitely come see me in Portland if you're in Portland. I've got some. I got some big things happening uh, this fall, which I'm pretty pumped about, which I'll talk about later down the road. And uh, yeah, just support local comedy because it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah, dude. All right. Thanks very Woo. much to our guest, Ian Stewart. Thank you guys for having me. I had a great time talking to you about uh, the old days. Oh, yeah. We should go visit Hammond Street. We should drink, we should drink some strawberry chocolate, strawberry milk. Strawberry milk on Hammond Street. Yeah. And would that go well with 40s? Oh yeah, absolutely. Milk and forties. Milk and strawberry yeah. milk and winning old English is a winning combination. Yeah, it's called the ulcer. It's a it's a really good mm. mix. So, so thanks very much. Kind of ulcer. Right? Yeah. But thanks very much to Ian Stewart, uh, and thanks very much to our uh, special co-host, a uh, minister of uh, Nation mm -hmm. of Islam, our legal advisor Herbert Bernstein, and uh, thanks to you for the viewer for watching.
the show today and uh, tune in next week. We'll have another exciting guest and uh, Kurt Baker will be back and uh, yeah, nice rack. And he will be wearing uh, a, a rose in his ear. Uh, I'm Connor McGrath. Thanks for the favorite color. That's just it with Connor and Kurt. <laughs> hey. hey. Mm. Thanks for tuning in nice. again, and have a good evening, afternoon, whenever. Whenever you're watching this. Mm. Hopefully 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Hopefully 2 a.m. naked. <laughs> this is that kind of show. <laughs> Thanks, and good night. Nice. nice. Mm -hmm. I think that was public access TV magic. Excellent. Pure magic. Pure magic. Lightning in a bottle. Yeah. Ne never be topped. <clears throat> I wonder if we good. have any time left. Yeah. Time left? Yeah. For what? For what? I don't know. Is this the like news? I think this is probably just oh, what's going on. Oh, we're rolling credits now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Well. We're just rolling credits. Yeah, That's fun. I guess so. Very exciting. Can my can the credits for maybe Ian fucking Stewart? Yeah. Comedian Ian fucking Yeah. Fucking comedian Ian fucking, fucking comedian. Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. All your jokes are about fucking. <laughs> just fucking. <laughs>